Welcome back. Uh, now we have a great uh, news from the underground segment with Ruth Yeager. Ruth Yeager sits down with a member of the Lafayette Parish Library Board of Controls member, Susan Hamilton, where they're going to discuss what's new with the Lafayette Public Library System and what we can expect to see in the coming weeks, months, and years. Take a look. Hello, and welcome to News from the Underground. I'm Ruth Yeager, your host. Tonight, we are going to be talking about what's new at the Lafayette Public Library. And our guest tonight is Susan Hamilton, mm -hmm. who is on the Lafayette Public Library Board of Controls. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Ruth. I'm glad to be here. Okay, first, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the Lafayette area? I've lived here for 30 years, and for most of those years, I was a librarian at uh, the, in the Catholic schools, first at a Holy Family, then at Our Lady of Fatima, and then at St. Thomas More. And since I retired, I have been active with the Lafayette Public Library. All right. And how long have you been on the board? I've been on the board seven years. The board has two five-year terms that, uh, with term limits uh, after the second term, so I will retire in three years. Okay. And how often does the board meet? The board meets uh, <laughs> monthly. Theoretically, but often we meet more than that now that we have a building program. Okay, well tell me about this pr building program. <laughs> You've got quite a bit planned. It's an ambitious mm -hmm. program. What's first? Well, um, the first thing to get where we are now was that we had to um, increase our budget. When I first got on the board, we barely had enough money to operate the library, and um, it, was a it still is a very tight br budget. So in 2002, we um, campaigned for and passed a tax election, which I'm very proud to say that 65 percent of the voters approved. And um, by the way, last this last summer, a renewal of of other millages that support the library were uh, approved at the rate of 80 percent. So we're really proud of our community for supporting the library, mm -hmm. and it tell, says a lot about Lafayette. Well, certainly <laughs> it has been a very positive um, aspect of living in Lafayette, I found. <laughs> but uh, And it's heavily used. But anyway, the um, the board felt that the, the community had fallen behind um, other, commu other cities in our state in providing library service. And the only way to bring, to modernize that service and bring it um, up to date would be to uh, build some new libraries. So we, we had a consultant come in and um, work with uh, interviewing people and uh, not just the staff and the board, mm -hmm. but the people in the community about what they wanted in, li in their libraries and came up with a proposal which um, uh, was about twice as big as what uh, we eventually were able to um, uh, pass with approval of the council and then get on the ballot. But um, we feel that um, th this brought our millage up to about uh, seven mills. Um, other cities like Baton Rouge and um, Shreveport have 10 or 11 mills to support their libraries. So we're still a bargain library system, and but we're going to be able to modernize and build um, uh, four new regional libraries and update the main library. So first on the agenda for building uh, was supposed to be the South Regional because that was the most underserved area. However, Karen Crow came forward and donated land, and we began with the North Regional. Okay, yeah, so Karen Crow, the city did? The city of Karen Crow mm -hmm. donated land to the uh, Lafayette uh, Parish, and um, it's all been signed and sealed and delivered, and in fact had to be before we could begin building. Okay, and what is the mm -hmm. time frame for building that one? Well, it's under construction now. If you go to the... Um, Lafayette Public Library website at um, it's um, lafayette.lib.law.us, I think. <laughs> okay, it will be at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Um, yes, that's it. So in, in the upper right hand corner, you click on a button and it goes to the what we call the blog for the building of the libraries. And you will see um, pictures of the Karen Crow branch library being built and it, it should it's it's in the um, later stages of building right now and it has walls it has roof 
Um, they're working on the inside, and um, you can see where the drive-up window will be for picking up your, your library books and uh, videos. And um, it should be finished in time for the summer program in uh, next summer, in okay. 2007. Okay, and if you go into this new library, what is going to strike you as being <laughs> different from the present libraries that we have? Well, one thing will be is that uh, there will be self-checkout. There will be a place where you can put your book under a reader, or put your card out first, and then your book, and it will be a very simple process. And, of course, there will be people on duty to help you with this, but um, you won't see a traditional uh, checkout desk. It will look a little different. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing you might see it, uh, that's very different from the current Cairn Crow Branch Library, which is really just in a storefront uh, in downtown Cairn Crow, is that there will be a separate children's reading area. And then the third thing that you will notice is something that the people of Cairn Crow asked for, and that is a uh, history and genealogy section a section of the library devoted just to history and uh, genealogy of the north side of Lafayette. Oh, okay. And are mm -hmm. you going to have somebody in that area in order to help out with that? Or how will uh, that work? Well, of course, the librarians on staff will be able to assist, but also volunteers um, as at the main library will be able to help people doing research. And there, on the website, there are a lot of tips for how to do genealogy research and how to keep track of it. So. Well, certainly you can do a lot from home. <laughs> I certainly have enjoyed having the library online and being able to look mm -hmm. at what your new books are. Or mm -hmm. if I read about a book or a movie, I can mm -hmm. look it up and see if you've got it. And if so, I can put my name in it for a request, and mm -hmm. then I get an email telling me it's there. So I have loved right. that service. Right. Um, so I don't have to spend as much time at the library, mm -hmm. but it's still a lot of fun to go there and just be there um, you know, browse the books mm -hmm. and use the facilities. Well, the the website uh, is can be accessed both at the library and from home. Um, there are um, advantages to using it at the library in that you have staff available to help you if you have trouble finding something, or if you don't understand how um, a database works. Hmm. And of course, people who do not have mm -hmm. access at home. Of course, and the mm -hmm. library is always filled with people who obviously don't have computers at home. But it, the libraries um, also, um, now most of our libraries have um, wireless internet access, Wi-Fi. And you do see people at the library with their own laptops working, which is interesting. That's a new uh, yeah. development. So all mm -hmm. that's missing is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the future, there will be coffee at the library. Um, it, our branches we, that we're opening are regional libraries, north, south, east, and west. We expand it, the main library if we don't have a little cafe, um, because there will be, at least be a vending machine and, um, you will be able to bring your coffee into the library. Okay, <laughs> just coffee, new. no food. <laughs> well, no, the, um, that, well, that's under discussion. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, there, um, I think at the cafe, South Regional will have a cafe for sure because it has enough square footage in the plans to allow for a cafe. Okay, where would the South um, Regional Library be? Well, the South Regional is located out um, on Johnston Street past uh, Acadiana Mall on the left at the intersection of Duyon Road Extension, which goes around behind the mall and uh, joins with Robley. So um, people in the neighborhood of the, um, of the current South uh, Storefront branch uh, will be able to use Robley to get behind the mall and, and to the new larger and more wonderful, believe it or not, <laughs> library. So 38,000 square feet, so it's going to be a big library. Uh, it will open in the summer of 2008. Okay, um, that's many times larger than the current storefront library. Yes. Um, what are you going to be doing to fill that? Are you going to be getting um, new books specifically for that? Or are you going to be moving books around? Well, the, that will mark a real mi milestone in the development of libraries in Lafayette. Um, there will be more n new materials, of course, 
uh, but it will also afford us an, uh, an opportunity to move some mat of the materials from the main library downtown out um, out there to supplement the new materials while we are renovating the downtown library. Uh, we, we could have started with the downtown library first, but there would be no place to put everything unless we had built one or two libraries beforehand. But the another milestone is that we are going to upgrade the computer system at that time. So um, there will be new books, new computer system, a new cafe, and, uh, a, and a wonderful big um, meeting room for the community, which is completely lacking in that part of town. Uh, there will be a uh, room for um, um, a small group meetings as well as large group meetings. And uh, it, But what kind of groups can use the meeting places? Well, a lot more than use it right now, I want to tell you, because we're so limited. But uh, nonprofits uh, and um, groups, uh, homeschooling groups, uh, anybody that's presenting information to the community, cons uh, musical groups, that kind of thing. Okay, well, that so. should bring up some interesting <laughs> programs. Yes. Well, the library does a lot of programming now, and this will just only increase the kind of and the amount of programming that we can have in the future. All of the branches will have separate children's areas with um, separate storytelling areas off of um, the children's room. And um, we're just really looking forward to all the possibilities there. And there will be parts of the children's area built to support um, craft projects in conjunction with storytelling. So, so it's really going to be a community center as oh, opposed yes. as yes. not just a repository for the printed matter. Well, libraries have always been a gathering place in the community, but um, and they've always been available to everyone in the community, no matter uh, their background or. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know where they came from or what they do, and it's been an opportunity for everyone to learn or um, enjoy recreation, recreational reading, um, uh, and gather. But I think as time goes by, we're seeing that people are looking for places to gather, and so it will become even more of a community resource than it has been. And it's particularly nice having a public area mm -hmm. where you can do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that the public requested, is more meeting rooms and some uh, small group study rooms. Okay, that sounds great. Well, so, you'd mentioned the main library, and mm -hmm. what are the plans for that? Well, the main library, because it needs total renovation, um, it's over 30 years old. Okay, well, total renovation <laughs> means erase it to the ground. And no, start, no, no, not rebuild, renovate. Okay. Um, it will be um, closed for the period of renovation. Okay, so it would be, begin in 2009 mm -hmm. and be closed for up to two years during the renovation. It will be a complicated renovation because it, we're dealing with an existing building. Um, but uh, while that is um, being, and, and let me just say here that it will include three floors instead of two open to the public because um, uh, originally when the building went up in, in the 1970s, uh, there was not enough money to use the third floor and there was always the hope that we would expand to the third floor. Um, when the bond issue went out for a vote in 2002, what we uh, wanted, we advertised um, that we would like to complete the third floor, which would add 15,000 square feet of space. Uh, we want to, of course, provide more computers. The original um, library grant for uh, from Bill Gates. Uh, that gave us a computer lab at Maine, and now, of course, and and they've um, uh, updated those computers. But there will just need to be more computers for our research. Um, and there's also going to be an emphasis, a continue the emphasis on genealogy, and we'd like to have a wonderful music collection, uh, and of course, an absolutely fantastic children's room. It's because it is a neighborhood library. Okay, what will the people who are using that library currently do um, in the meantime? Is there going to be a mm -hmm. storefront there? Or well, some, what we hope temporary? to do is have some temporary uh, downtown location while the um, main library is being built. But a lot of the um, uh, 
organizational aspect of library work, the behind the scenes library work, ordering of books, keeping track of everything is done um, and the administration is, is done at that library and so we'll have to move that uh, and since the, that part of the operation will be moved to, south, to the South Regional Library. Okay, well, just temporarily? Uh, temporarily, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Okay, well, how many people, you, well, you say mm -hmm. it's open to everybody, about how many people actually use the library? Well, I wrote that down because <laughs> I thought I might forget. So, um, in, in this last year, we don't have the full statistics for this year yet, but in, in, at the end of 2005, 850,000 people walked in the doors of the library. And I think that works out to about 2,000, to about 2,500 people a day for the whole system. And um, that that's just users. I mean, a lot of people go to the library who um, who don't check out a book or right. a video mm -hmm. or a DVD or a CD-ROM or book on tape, but they may enjoy reading the newspaper or they might use a computer or they might ask for some help um, finding information about taxes. Mm -hmm. So, or attend a program. Okay? Yes, or they might just want a nice quiet place to study. Right, exactly. It's very pleasant to go to the library and, and uh, enjoy your newspaper or, or to study. Okay, so the, there are actual, um, library card holders are about 110,000. So that is mm -hmm. more than half the population of Lafayette Parish. If you say Lafayette Parish is 200,000 people, which is debatable right now, but it's mm -hmm. around there. Um, we, last year we circulated, um, uh, we had circulation records of uh, 1.3 million. And is the, that books and DVDs everything, and everything? Everything, mm -hmm. but of course it's mostly books. Uh, uh, DVDs and so forth are, are becoming more popular, are very popular, but most of the circulation is still books. And uh, in the summer that's um, about 50% adults and uh, you, uh, checkouts and 50% children's. But in the winter, it's more like 60% adult and 40% children. So, okay. um, Well, you had mentioned that there are a lot of programs going on. How, mm -hmm. how can people find out about what's going on at the library? Well, again, you can go to the website. There's a real handy spot on the website where you can see what's coming up in terms of programs. But we also have a newsletter, uh, which I brought. Um, that you can pick up at the library that has all of the programs in it for two months. And it's put out every two months. And I, I think that we'll be showing on the screen uh, the newsletter. Um, and there's a wonderful little uh, pull-out section with all of the programs um, for children. Mm -hmm. So if you have children, you can just pull the sheet out and put it up by your calendar. But everything else in the newsletter is um, about... Uh, you know, the hours of the 10 different locations of the library, what's going on there, uh, any special speakers or uh, craft projects, anything, um, meetings, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And you can pick this up at the library, but what I really recommend is that you join Friends of the Library for $5 a year, and you get it in the mail two weeks before it appears at the library. So you'll be in the know. Five dollars a year—it's a real bargain. Plus, you get in on preview day at Friends of the Library book sale. Right. So, okay. And those book sales are a combination of discarded books and donated books. Is that it? It's mostly donated books. The people of Lafayette are very generous in bringing their used books to the library for the Friends sale, and the Friends have raised over in the last—I think they've been operating over uh, twenty years, twenty-five years—about uh, four hundred thousand dollars. They make an annual donation to the library of over twenty thousand dollars, twenty four thousand um, dollars. Is that money used earmarked, for, or is it? Um, it's for um, books, uh, book purchases. It's for um, uh, programming. It's like they pay for the a lot of the things like balloons on the launching of the summer reading program for children. They they pay for the little newspaper that called Book Page that you can pick up, which has book reviews in it. Uh, all kinds of little enhancements that wouldn't ordinarily be in our, in our budget. 
But the, the Friends are a real support group for the library, and we also have um, one other, uh, two other support groups. One uh, is the Library Foundation, uh, and the Foundation raises money to provide an income stream for the purchase of books over time. Okay. Uh, so to so who belongs to the Foundation? Anybody who wants to. Um, it's a $35 a year membership fee. And they have wonderful events and fundraisers. The latest one was Trolley Tales, where they had two versions of it. Uh, a trolley picked you up at downtown Lafayette and drove you around the, to look at historic sites. And there was a narration and storytelling at two of the sites. Mm -hmm. And the children's uh, version was in the afternoon. The parent, the adult version was in the evening. So that's a good group to be mm -hmm. in if you like to um, raise money in a... Uh, kind of ongoing way uh, that preserves the uh, principle of the money and the income is used mm -hmm. to support the library. And the third support group is um, a PAC, a political action committee called the Library PAC. And um, I'm proud to say I organized that because <laughs> it was, it, it was, it, it's important because the um, uh, the library itself can't campaign, campaign for it, uh, its tax mm -hmm. renewals. Right. Mm -hmm. It can only give out information. Uh, we needed a group that could say, please vote for the libraries. Yes, vote for the libraries. And advertise in the newspaper, vote for the libraries on the radio. Uh, we're, we're advocating for the public library. And it's, I call it a good pack. <laughs> Packs okay. don't have a good reputation, but this no, is a good but, pack. Yeah, they can um, be very <laughs> useful. <laughs> well, one of the things which I always enjoy about going to the library mm -hmm. is go, heading to the new book section and mm -hmm. just seeing what's new, mm -hmm. um, both for nonfiction and fiction, because you know some of the books I will have read about, but I see completely new ones, sometimes, uh -huh. like, sometimes very intriguing titles. Um, who decides what books are um, chosen for the library? One of the favorite jobs of librarians is to keep abreast of new materials, new books, mm -hmm. and they're wonderful tools for doing that. And all the librarians, the professional librarians and other staff, staff members who wish to contribute can suggest books for purchase. Um, but also the public can suggest books. Mm -hmm. If you walk up to the reference desk of your library or the checkout, uh, not the checkout desk downtown, but I know in the branches the reference desk is the same as the checkout, um, you can, there's a piece of paper where you yeah, can I fill actually, out a I have request. done that once. <laughs> I requested a mm -hmm. book you know, on Internet Library mm -hmm. Loan, and um, I got it, and it had been purchased, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it was part of the library. So. Well, oftentimes they already um, have planned to purchase that book. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they will get it on interlibrary loan if it's an older book, especially out of print. Mm -hmm. And uh, but frequently, if you may be the first person to read that book if you requested it. Right. The, the well, I think this one was Carville, which is mm -hmm. by a local author, and uh -huh. it had just come out. So, mm -hmm. no, I was very mm -hmm. pleased to get it right, you know, delivered right at the south right. side. Right. And it's wonderful to be able to. Um, to do that, and and I think that's an example of how the library is responsive to the community. The, li the librarians are trained to um, respond to the community, especially public librarians, and um, they have a real sense of what people here are interested in, and they try to buy books on of all sorts, popular fiction, mm -hmm. um, more literary fiction, and of course nonfiction uh, from all. Uh, political viewpoints and different subject matter. So I, I think the librarians do a good job with selecting books. And, and the public right. <laughs> contributes. So. Okay, um, you've got three years left, you said. Um, so mm -hmm. you, what would you say has been your greatest contribution um, during the years that you have been on um, the board? Oh my goodness, Ruth. <laughs> we just have a few minutes left. So well, I would say uh, probably working on the tax election. I, I, um, I thought it was very important to update our libraries, and mm -hmm. I, I, I spent a good two months talking to groups and talking to individuals and um, even appearing on television. Uh, to uh, explain and try to persuade people. But I'll tell you, it was 
in a sense, it was hard for me because I'd never done it before, mm -hmm. but it was an easy job because the community of Lafayette mm -hmm. is, is really supportive of their libraries. Um, then the next, um, really right now, the most important thing is working um, with uh, the library director and the staff on planning these new libraries. And um, as a member of the board, I am on the building committee. The, the building committee is formed of the board and various members in the community who are involved in, in the building, um, such as people with City Parish Council and, uh, I mean, um, excuse me, the planning uh, mm -hmm. portion of the city parish um, and people who actually do the building and, and process the work orders. So, uh, and we have an architect, Tom Sammons from UL, who's on our mm -hmm. board, our planning committee, not board. Okay, well, but, but so I when you retire, being, you could be able to look back at those new uh -huh, libraries yes. and say, I, you know, had a... When, had when a I retire, I'm going to uh, use the library even more, but I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and um, thank you um, for joining us for News from the Underground, um, and good night. Outstanding job, Ruth. We greatly appreciate you submitting that segment to us. Uh, it was great information. Thank you also to your esteemed guest, Susan Hamilton. We hope you will come back and join us before your tenure is over with the library system. You're definitely doing an incredible job there leading them forward. And with that, that's all the time we have time for. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Blue Mondays. Blue Mondays, again, is uh, each and every week, Monday nights at 9 p.m. here on AOC Channel 15. Don't forget tomorrow morning, curl on up uh, to with your cup of coffee, log on over to the Daily Advertiser's website at theadvertiser.com, and check out my column called The Left Blog. It appears each and every Tuesday. Uh, and with that, we thank you for joining us. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week. Good night.